Hello, Sharon Durbin Graves uh, with Painting with Acrylics 101.com in my studio today here in Kentucky. <laughs> I was trying to do a Facebook Live, but things didn't work out well. You know, sometimes they just don't. So today I'm making this video and hopefully uh, everybody who would have been on the live will get to see it also. What I wanted to talk to you about today is drawing and um, drawing is the foundation for all art and I um, this morning I thought well I'm gonna draw a coffee mug a mug for me it's a hot chocolate mug so this is the mug that I it's my husband's favorite mug pulled it out of the cabinet and I didn't have any paper with me in the house and I didn't have any pencils <laughs> so I got a piece of copy paper and a big pen okay so you can if you don't have the best and the greatest and everything, it does not matter. Start with where you are and what you have, okay? So, I had my, my first thing that I drew was this little cup over here, and it was just out of my head. I was just drawing. So then I thought, this is not working out well. So I went to the cabinet and pulled out my husband's mug. So this, you can see, looks much better than that okay now the reason it looks better is i have something reference to look at all the time uh, this is called uh, drawing or painting from life and when you've got something in front of you you can see where the highlights are um, how this handle has to be created to make to for the shape that it is so we're gonna um this is an interesting handle here because it's got this little lip here and here and the way it connects to the um, the handle connects to the mug itself it's actually really just paint and it's very smooth but it doesn't look smooth so when you're looking at something okay hopefully you can see that you can see that this lip is green but right about here it it's it's thick green here but right about here it starts to get thin and you just see the top of it so as as i'm drawing you can tell that that's what i was looking at okay so right about there and right about there it got thinner so i showed the green but i didn't show as much of the green now on here i was gonna uh, the goal was to to draw like a cup of hot chocolate with steam coming out of it but I didn't realize that when I have the, the drink, in, the drink's not going to come all the way to the top. So it has to have a line right around there. Okay, it starts about here and goes to about there. And then you don't see it. You're seeing this cup and not the inside of it there. On the handles, in order to make this part here look correct that I'm looking at, it has to be darker. And then I didn't do it up here, but you can see that if I would what that little bit did for the shape of the handle. So you can also see right here is a highlight point. Back here is kind of a shadow point. So we're going to try to get all those things in here today as we draw the, our mug. Now... Uh, learning how to see in art, uh, in creating art, is critical. You really have to analyze what it is you're looking at. Just like we just did with this cup, when you're drawing anything or painting anything, you have to be very conscious of what it is you're seeing. Okay, so I've moved my camera around. I realized <laughs> I'm a left-hander living in a right-handed world. So I'm, I'm going to try to, I've never had my camera at this angle before, so we're going to see how well it, because my arm was in front of you a lot. So I kind of woke up this morning with a, well, hey, goofball, why don't you put the camera on the right-hand side and your left arm won't be in front? I'm like, okay, well, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't always catch on right away. Okay, so right here at the bottom of the cup is, it's curved. It has to be curved. Okay, so now it's going to come up, and the cup is wider here than it is here. So it has to come up that way. Wider. 
not crazy wide, but wider. And now the same thing over here. I'm gonna, I left a few blank spots for the, um, the handle, but I don't know that they're necessary. We'll, we'll do it again. It might not be in the right place now. Okay, so you wanna kinda of make sure that this and this are even. So, yeah, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna, this is the front of the cup. And this is called an ellipse that you're drawing here. And this is the back of the cup. It's not a circle, it's not an oval. It's called an ellipse. Okay, so here comes the handle. I'm gonna put it over here so I can see it a little better. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. <laughs> okay, so the handle comes out this way. And here, and here it goes, it almost goes down. Okay, now the outside, I'm going to draw the outside edge first. It's curved. And now I'm going to come in and get the inside edge. Where's my, I'm use, I use a kneaded eraser, and if you get a little place that you need to erase, you can take your kneaded eraser and work it in a point and go in there and get that, that area. Okay, so now that looks pretty decent. Now, let me just say this. I do these things pretty quickly so you can see it, and then you can practice it. So I don't always get it exactly right, this quickly so I, but i don't want to go back and and spend a ton of time showing you how to fix it necessarily so anyway here comes that edge that lip got a little crazy right there no big deal and now i'm going to draw another little it's not very far away from the original edge of the cup Okay, so there you can see that. Now, we're going to pretend that we have some uh, liquid in our mug, and we're going to start down about here. Okay, so there you can see that the liquid is in there. Now, we're going to just give it a little bit of back and forth here to show you that it's liquid. It's got some movement in it, okay? There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna work on, and I am using uh, an 8B pencil, but um, I might not use that except for showing you how to do it so you can actually see it. So that, that's one reason I use a, such a dark pencil. So we're just gonna come across here and get that green in there. And now we're gonna take around the back Make it kind of dark. You can come back and erase that top line if, if it's too big. Okay, now this is a little rough looking over here. We're gonna try to even that out. There we go.
Now, if I need to, if this is not dark deep enough here, okay, I can make it deeper and darker. So that gives us a little better look. Anyway, you can spend a lot of time, you know, perfecting this. I'm showing you the method. Okay, now I have left a little bit of a, a light spot there because there's a reflection there. But I'm going to take out even a little more there, okay? And now on the back, there's several. There's one right there. And then there's something over here, too. In case you've never painted or drawn with me before, I wear, I don't know, triple bifocals. <laughs> but oftentimes I have to go like this in order to see what I'm doing. So if you see me do that, don't, don't panic. I'm not losing my mind. Okay, so let's come over here. And on the handle, the color doesn't change to green till about there. But if you make that line straight, it will not look right. Straight is not, it needs to be curved. Okay, now we need to put in that this is the front part of that handle. And then down here, there is a lot of this back part of the handle showing. So this part's gonna be even narrower. Okay, now these are all green. Now we want to do, we can see, let's see the outside of the edge of the handle is over there. And then we can see some of the inside of the edge. So we're going to kind of change this a little bit up here like this and meet that okay so I need to get that part out of there and I think this part needs to go away we'll see as we're working and I think this part also needs to so we're gonna kind of straighten up our line here and bring it down around in here. See, once you get your shape right, then you can make some adjustments. Okay, so this part of the handle is dark, very dark. It's all dark green, but some parts have to be darker than others in order to give it the look that it's a 3D thing. You're trying to make a, a an object look 3D on a 2D paper. Okay, so let's see. This part in here is darker. And then this part in here is darker. Okay, so now we're starting to really look like a 3D handle. So now we're going to come in here and carefully, lightly put in this. And down in here where I'm seeing this part, this is going to have to be darker but not as dark as this. Okay, so you're gonna have several um, layers of color. And then as it comes towards the cup, it's gonna get lighter. Okay, so there's, it's barely perceptible, and that's exactly what you want. You don't want to have lines that say, oh, it's light to mid to dark. You want it to all blend in. So this part up here is also lighter. Okay, now when I'm looking at my cup, um, this part of the cup is darker. 
it's still light, but it's, it's, you know, it's white, but it's darker. Okay, so in order to make it look round, even though this is a lighter color, you still have to show that. Okay, now this side, as I'm looking at it, there's actually a big reflection of my shirt in it, but I'm not going to worry with that. I'm just going to get it lighter all the way across. And this part over here is even lighter. Okay, so what that tells me is the light's coming from here. Now, when I normally do a painting or a drawing, I have a little arrow on either side telling me which way the light's coming from. So here we go. It's lighter on this side than it is on this side. So I put my arrow in the wrong place. How about that? Usually I put it on there first. Whoops. Something fell over back there. Sorry. Okay, so the light's coming from here. It's lighter over here, darker on this side. So there we go. We got that right. So down here is going to be darker. Now underneath this lip is another, sh is another shadow. Now it's darker than the mug, but not as dark as this green. Otherwise, it would just look like that green lip is all one, it is great big. Okay, so now hopefully you can see that shadow there. Now, if this goes away, just darken it up. There you go, okay? Now, with the light coming in this way, it's going to hit over here, but then this is going to have a little bit of a shadow. Till about midway, okay? Now, the light's coming this way, so the mug itself creates a shadow. And it's going to go all the way off the paper. So I'm just going to put that in here real quick. I just want to give you the idea. You can play around with it much longer and make it better. Now, where the cup and the shadow come together, the cup actually creates another layer of shadow. So this right in here has to be very dark. And then you're going to blend it on out. So not only do you have to look at the item that you're drawing, but you also have to look at the shadow of reflections around it. Now, in my left-handed world, I have made some, um, I've drug my hand over it, so I've got some smudges. So I just take care of those with that. I take off my, and I put it on there in a very light pencil so I don't have a problem erasing it. But here we go, we have a mug Okay, I don't like these hard lines that I have here in the shadow. I probably would have drawn them much lighter, but I might have to come along now and darken up the shadow part so you don't see a hard line. And again, I can play with that for a very long time. Okay, well, there we go, folks. Um, I hope that you understood what we're trying to do here today. Uh, I, if I were sitting here, I would probably be playing with this um, much longer. <laughs> I, I would just keep playing with it until I was real happy with it. And you can play forever on a drawing or a painting. It's not always a good thing because you get to a point where then you start messing it up. 
But at any rate, um, you now have a pretty good idea of how to create um, form using color and pressure because that's all we used today. We did one pencil. It was a number 8B. Hopefully you know what all those letters and stuff mean. B is soft. So the higher the number on a B, the softer the pencil. So an 8B is very soft, but you can get some really dark marks. Uh, H is hard. Uh, and so the higher the number on that, the harder it gets and the lighter your um, mark will be. Uh, I would recommend that you would, if you have a new set of pencils, that you would um, find out what they do. So here's an 8B and I can make, get heavy pressure. So I can see how heavy that can go. Now if I come back this way, I can see how light the pressure, what I can do, how light of a mark can I make with an 8B pencil. And I would do that with all the pencils in my kit so I can see what I can get with those pencils. Uh, it's also a good way to warm up. Uh, if you want to draw something but you don't know what to do, um, do one of these with with your pencils and, and all your brain will start to move. So thank you so much for being with us today. Hopefully, if you've enjoyed this video, you're going to hit the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to my channel. And next to the subscribe word, there's usually a little bitty bell. If you'll click on that bell, it'll send you a notification whenever I upload a new video, which I do almost well, I do it every week, and it's usually on Friday. So um, my website is paintingwithacrylics101.com, and I have two free Facebook groups that I would love for you to join. One is for homeschools. If you are a homeschool family who wants to add art to your curriculum, under Facebook groups, look for the words Painter Nation Homeschool Art Club. And if you have it on your bucket list that you want to learn how to paint and or draw, uh, but you've been having a hard time finding uh, information for true beginners. I love teaching beginners because I struggled so hard uh, learning in the very beginning 20 years ago. Uh, and that, so I love to teach beginners. I teach them all the time. And, um, but you can go to bucket list artists in the Facebook group section and ask to join. Each of them have three questions to answer. If you don't answer the questions, I can't open the door. So, <laughs> I'd love to let you in, but I can't open the door if you don't ask, answer the questions. So thank you so much again. Have a great day. Sharon Durbin Graves, Painting with Acrylics 101.com.